The Farron Mansion in New Canaan, Connecticut stands vacant, an empty monument to a marriage and a lifestyle that seemed charmed until it all ended in violence. The family gone, the secrets out. Now that the former White House lawyer charged with trying to kill his wife, Michael Farron. Turn to that former White House lawyer charged with trying to murder his that wife. That high-powered lawyer is facing criminal charges of attempted murder and first-degree assault. Mary Margaret Farron is in hiding with their daughters, one seven, the other just an infant, recovering from a terrible beating from her husband. As she tells police the night of the attack, afraid he'll come back to finish the job. I'm convinced if he gets out, he's gonna try to kill me and the girls. Her abuser, her husband, is not hiding. He's not even in jail. Out on $750,000 bond, the lifelong Washington bureaucrat now causing gridlock in the legal proceedings against him for five long years. It was absolutely terrifying. My older daughter, she just was so worried I was going to be killed. We lived in hiding. Farron, the Clarence Darrow of delay, filing motions, winning continuances, provoking an astonishing 68 court appearances, slowing not only the criminal case against him, but also a civil lawsuit brought by his now ex-wife, Mary Margaret, suing him over the terrible beating he had given her. How difficult was it for Mary Margaret to have this drawn out for years and years and years? It was torture for her. Barron becomes a regular at the Stanford Courthouse. You too, Marshal. Hobnobbing with marshals and journalists. Do you want to do you want to have anything to say this morning? Thank you. It's good to see you. Okay. Acting more like a defense attorney than a defendant. Um, As they prepare their civil lawsuit, well, Mary Margaret's attorneys videotape a deposition a with the dapper former White House operative. I'm going to show you a picture which we're going to mark as Exhibit Three, and that's a picture of her. Wife, Mary Margaret Farron, isn't it? I'm not going to respond based upon my attorney's advice. But under hours of questioning, Farron, still facing an eventual criminal trial, takes the fifth. I, I will not respond. I'm not going to respond. I will not respond to not respond to the question. 94 times. What we see in that picture, that was caused by what you did to her, isn't that right? I'm not going to respond based upon my Fifth Amendment rights. Barron later fires his lawyers, deciding to defend himself, but then doesn't show up for the civil trial. This is a case being presented by one side, with a jury there, with no one on the other side. Barron sends a bizarre message to the court, claiming he's been involuntarily committed for psychiatric treatment. He never intended on winning. He just wanted to game the system and get delays. The trial goes on without him, the jury punishing Farron with a $28 million verdict. Then, nearly five years after the attack, the criminal trial. And another surprise. Farron telling the judge he is suicidal and can't bear the strain of attending this trial either. No, Mr. Farron is not with us. Uh, here today in the courtroom. And the second trial marches along with a missing defendant. Mr. Farron may be absent. Let's go. Call your first witness, please. They call Mary Margaret Farron. But his brave ex-wife finding the courage to revisit the worst night of her life. He was on top of me. And he was squeezing my necks, strangling me and slamming my head, and slamming my head into the floor. What was it like to take the stand and testify? It was, it's always hard to relive it. And it's still like, you would hope it would dull over time, but it doesn't. But it's also a day of empowerment in the sense of you're transferring the responsibility of this bad, what happened, this terrible thing to him. And it is a day to speak out. I want to show you, it's been marked as date exhibit 37 for identification. The peak moment of excruciating drama, she peers into an evidence bag. You see the horror in her eyes. <laughs> That's the flashlight, Mr. Baron, the defendant used to beat me. Good afternoon, Good afternoon, all. You may be seated. It doesn't take the jury long, just a day. All right, gentlemen, I've received a note uh, from the jury. We have uh, reached a verdict. 
Barron, like it or not, ordered into court on Judgment Day, forced to listen to the verdict. What say you, Mr. Foreperson? Is he guilty or not guilty of the crime of criminal attempt to commit murder? Guilty. Court is now adjourned. What was it like when the verdict came down? I collapsed and cried, and it was such a relief. At sentencing, Judge Richard Comerford gives Barron 15 years and a tongue lashing. He's being sentenced for the horrific act that occurred here. You don't take it upon yourself to mete out justice, especially not a human being who's dedicated his professional life to the law, especially a human being who professed love for this woman and for his children. The judge orders Farron is never to see his daughters again. If he serves his full sentence, he'll be nearly 80 years old when he's released. Is 15 years just punishment for what he did? No. I don't see how you put a time frame on something as atrocious and egregious. And he's never apologized for what no. he's done. No. Farron is appealing his criminal conviction and the civil judgment against him. Do you feel safe now, today? I do. Mary Margaret okay. has a mission now telling women don't ignore the warning signs when you're a young woman and you meet this charismatic guy who's so charming and just adores you but he shows that jealous rage you know what think about what your life is going to be like and you think you can handle it and you know what you can't as something doesn't seem right when you're with someone initially listen to yourself there's a quote that says, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. Well, as she says, it can happen to anyone. And if you're a victim of domestic abuse and need help, go to the National Domestic Violence Hotline. You can call them at 1-800-799-SAFE, or you can visit their website, thehotline.org.